turn my mic on so I don't frustrate the sound guy. Well, it's great to see you today. When I came in, it was snowy. That's okay. Pardon? Not much. And then I got the bad news. When is it? The end of the week? We're supposed to have four inches and 15 degrees. Wow, okay. I guess my poor dog will never go to the bathroom again. <laughs> she doesn't know quite what to think about snow and cold and frost. <clears throat> she uh, walks down the sidewalk, stops along the way, and looks, sniffs, and finally says, well, there's no other option, and goes. Well, as I said, <clears throat> Pardon me, it's great to see you today. I want you to turn to the person next to you. Listen, you've got to be sincere about this, okay? If you're not sincere, don't say it. Don't turn to the person next to you, okay? I would suggest, though, that if it's your husband or your wife, you better do it, okay? I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, I'm glad you're at church today, all right? Go ahead. Well, you know, if I was sitting next to some of you, I wouldn't be convinced. So we're going to try that one more time, all right? I'm used to it now. I know it's going to be, it's going to take at least two tries, so let's do it. Turn to the person next to you and sincerely say, boy, I'm glad you're at church today. Go ahead, do it. Now, here's one more thing I want us to say together this morning. <clears throat> and my wife said, you know, uh, David Pullen stole your theme. I said, what? David Pullen was, he's the pastor's uh, first Nazarene in uh, Tallahassee, Florida. <clears throat> but many moons ago, Dave Pullen was on my staff as a youth pastor. Great, probably the best youth pastor I ever had. <clears throat> and... Uh, I taught him well. I told if he stole my theme, I taught him well. Our theme is God will do more in 2024. Let's say that together, all right? God will do more in 2000. <clears throat> now I'm going to ask you to say it. And I'm going to listen to see how sincere you say that, okay? Because if we're not sincere, God's going to say those folks they don't, they're not interested. God is interested, all right? And I, it's not just a saying. I really believe that God's going to do more in 2024. Say it, okay? God. That's pretty good. All right, great, great, because I believe that today. <clears throat> Could we pray together this morning? As usual, when it's damp and wet, I have sinus issues and I'm having this morning. And then I, I want to just share something with you. You do know that when you come here on Sunday or whenever it is you come, when you walk in the door, did you know that Satan walks in with you? Did you know that? He does. He's here at every service. And he'll do what he can do to distract you singing, you'll be thinking about everything else except praising God. When, it, when it's time for the message, you'll be thinking about where are we going to eat lunch today? I know Church of God folks would never do this. But I know some Nazarene folks in Winter Haven, Florida. They don't do it so much anymore because there's not anybody that hardly, hardly left a text. But when that church was really strong, they would text one another during the sermon and decide where they were eating lunch. And I'm not so sure that some of them didn't go ahead and make reservations. You, you guys don't do that stuff. Satan is here. Every time we come, he's here. And, and I just, you say, well, Pastor, do you, do you believe in a personal devil? I sure do. You know why? You know why I do. This is not the message today. I'm going to get to that in a moment. And by the way, 
This is a two Bible sermon today. So buckle your seatbelt. I sure do. And you know why I do? Because I have seen the devil get strife stirred up in churches. I visited in the homes of moms and dads who used to love one another, and the devil has gotten in their home and created division. And sometimes it winds up in divorce. I've seen people's lives were totally, absolutely wrecked by the powers of darkness and that same thing. I believe. But here's what I also believe. You and I, through the power of Jesus Christ, have authority over the devil. And you may not do this, but I do. Okay? I, I just sometimes have to look the devil in the eye and say this to him. Get away. Get out of here. One day Jesus said that when Peter said, when Jesus said, we're going to Jerusalem, Peter said, no, no, we ain't going down there. If we go down there, they're going to kill you. And Jesus, the response to that was, Get thee behind me, Satan. He's there to interrupt any way he can. So I want to pray this morning, and, and I'm going to pray against the powers of darkness. If you believe in that, if you'll pray with me, you'll be amazed at what God will do. We love you today, Father. We've sung it together. Oh, God, how I need you. We need you today, Lord, and, and in your name and in the power of the blessed Holy Spirit, we come against Satan today and all of his minions, and we bid him for the next 30 or 35 minutes to leave this sanctuary, that all of our hearts and minds will be open and will be clear as we share It's in the powerful, strong name of Jesus that we pray these things. Amen. Amen. We, uh, we moved from Virginia to West Texas. Wow. You talk about a change in scenery. We lived in Virginia where there are nice tall trees and Four seasons, winter being the shortest of all the four, to West Texas, where it's open prairie, open range. You say, well, are, are there any trees in Texas? Yes. There are mesquite trees, which is one of the hardest woods you may or may not know. You wouldn't know this if you didn't live in Texas. It's one of the hardest woods that there is uh, they recommend, uh, I used to go with guys and cut firewood because we had a fireplace in, in the house we lived in, and uh, you could wear out a chainsaw blade in an afternoon of cutting mesquite wood. And it got there from Mexico and South Texas when the uh, cowboys would bring the herds up, headed toward Kansas to the They'd eat the berries off the mesquite trees and drop them along the way. And so they don't, they don't claim this, but mesquite trees could actually be the national tree of Texas. But there were other trees. We lived in Wichita Falls, <clears throat> not on a tree-lined street, but there were trees all around us, oaks and different kinds of trees. You left the city limits to go almost anywhere in Texas. It's a lot like the terrain here. When I, we, we went to uh, Champaign the other day, and I said to Barb, I said, look around. Except for a little, I mean, I know they're bigger, but people build the houses in the middle of these fields and plant trees around them, and I'm, I'm, I assume that you plant the trees around your house Keep the wind from blowing it away. Is that am I right? But I said, look around. Kind of reminds you of West Texas, doesn't it? Now, I've not had this experience here yet. I remember.
remember we moved to West Texas. And the first time we drove somewhere at night away from this city and got out of the car and looked up. I'm telling you, and it's, and it's not that they shine brighter in Texas than any other place. It's just that there aren't any lights around as you have in the city. The stars just shine like crazy. It's, <clears throat> sometimes you just, you just keep looking at the stars. Did you know this morning that God wants First Church of God in Charleston, Illinois to shine like the stars in the sky. Oh, you say, Pastor, you're making that up. I never read that in the Word of God. Well, that's a shame because it's there. And I want to read it to you this morning. And, and, then, and please don't turn me off before I get started. I want to share with you eight ways that God wants First Church of God in Charleston, Illinois, to shine like the stars in 2024. Okay, here we go. Turn with me, if you would, to Philippians chapter 2. And I, I brought this Old Testament because it's the NIV. Uh, the larger Bible I preach out of is NET, the New English Translation. I like it. It's, it's not in conflict with anything else, but I just like the way that the NIV expresses what I want to read to you this morning. Here's what Paul says. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good pleasure. Now, I'm just pointing those verses out to you this morning to tell you that's a powerful preaching point. But I shall not stop there. Let's go on. I love this. Paul said, do everything without what? Complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which, are you ready for this? You shine like the stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life to that crooked and perverse I am. And Paul goes on to say, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ, for I did not run or labor for nothing, but even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and the service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you, so you too should be glad and rejoice with me. I really believe, and, and I know you believe this too, <clears throat> that this church has a great history. Amen. You've had some, you've had some outstanding days in this church. Amen. You have. You you have been a force for the gospel in this city. In spite of the fact that there are other churches in this town. And God has used you. And you have been in days gone by. You have been shining stars holding forth the word of life to those who were lost and dying in Charleston. I believe that. I believe that. I believe God has used you 
in a marvelous, wonderful way. And here's what I believe. God is going to do more in 2024 than you have ever seen in days gone by. I've got to share a message with you in a couple weeks. This is a wonderful text out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, where God says to Isaiah, listen, don't look back. Look ahead. Is history important? Yes, as long as we learn from it. Okay. But we don't live, I don't live, looking backward. I live looking forward. A lady came to me in Pickford, my, our first tips assignment, and she said, Pastor, would, would you like me to tell you what happened in this church? I said, no, I'm not interested in that. You're not interested? Why not? I said, because that's history. All right. And we can't, good, bad, or indifferent, we can't go back and change history as much as we'd like to. We just can't do it. So I don't dwell on that. My look is a forward look praising God for what he has done in past days, but believing that the best days are still ahead. Amen? You can say, man, it's all right. Listen, man. It doesn't scare me. It doesn't bother me. In fact, I preach better if you do it. I also preach shorter if you do it. <laughs> It's a catch-22, isn't it? God wants to do more in this church in 2024 than perhaps he's ever done in the past. And I'm not talking about attendance. Or, I, I just believe that God wants to work in the lives of you, and God will work in my life, and God will mold and continue to shape us and move us toward a new day in this city. And as a result of that, what will happen? As a result of that, people will find God. I love this verse. It's the last verse in Acts chapter 2. And the Lord added daily those who were being saved. I believe that some of the 16,000 folks <clears throat> that live in a circumference around this building, I believe that some of those 16,000 folks could be some of those who would be saved daily. You say, but oh, wait a minute, Pastor, we, don't, we, don't, we just come to church on Sundays and we have Wednesday night. How could it happen daily? It happens daily when you and I understand we are to shine like stars and hold out the word of life to those around us. Oh, you say, preacher, come on. Hey, this is the 21st century. People are not interested. And could I tell you, if you hear that being whispered in your ear, it is Satan himself that's telling you that. Because I believe that people are more interested than you think they are. People are facing issues. They have problems. They have situations in their lives like they've never had before. And I believe that oftentimes they're more open to somebody just saying to them, Hey, did you know that God loves you? And I'm not talking about the four spiritual laws or the Roman road of leading people to Christ. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about just loving folks. Being willing when you know, when you know they're struggling, being willing to remind them that God loves them. God can change your lives. I'm going to brag on my wife for a minute. Oh, she doesn't pay me to do this. several years she was a, a manager of a floral department in a grocery store a, a, 
across from her station was a bank. There was a young lady in that bank. Her name was Cassie. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to get to the points here after a while. If we don't get up to them today, there's next week. Okay. And besides, there's eight of them, so you know. See, some of you, some of you heard that and immediately said, "Oh God, not eight. No, not all in one day. I couldn't stand it if I could do it." Okay. And God began to work through my wife, and she began to love on Cassie. No, no, no. She didn't go over there. Like I could go over here to Jacob and start beating him on the chest and say, hey, Jacob, don't you know that God loves you and God wants to save you? No, if you do that, you're going to turn folks off. Did you know that? You don't beat people over the head with the Bible. That doesn't help them. You can't beat the gospel into them. She started loving Cassie. And part of that, they began to, they established a relationship and and, and one day, Cassie said to Barb, actually, we first met Cassie at the bank. You know, we used to go. That, that's where we met her. And then she changed and, and worked in the bank where Barb's store was. And she just started loving Cassie. And, and one day, Cassie said that her husband had left her and she had these kids. And she said, oh, to do. I'm trying to work. I got these youngins. And we had a preschool. And Barb said, well, Cassie, why don't you, why don't you bring your kids to our preschool? She said, oh, I can't afford that. And Barb said, I have connections. Long story short, <clears throat> for a pretty good while, we had Cassie's kids come to our preschool. church. Yes, it got saved. Just loving on folks. Okay? <clears throat> See, we, we make it so complicated because the devil tells us before we even visit with somebody, ah, don't talk about Jesus to them. They're not interested. That's his line. I choose to believe they're probably more interested than we think they are. Incidentally, Cassie met a nice young man who'd been in the Navy, got out of the Navy, became a police officer in the city of Chesapeake. And they started going together. <clears throat> Cassie called me and said, Pastor, I, I, I want to get married. I said, well, it's great. And I met this young man. He was... He was a sharp guy, and a Christian, loved Jesus. Did a beach wedding. You ever go to a beach wedding? No, I didn't wear a bathing suit. I wore a suit like I would normally wear at a wedding. But it was a beautiful beach wedding. He said, well, Cassie and her family are still in church. Not only are they in church, she's the secretary to the pastor of a growing church in Chesapeake, Virginia, and they are very active. You see, <clears throat> we, we make holding forth the word of life so much more complicated than it really is. We just need to say, God, help me to shine like the stars out there in my community where I live and where I work, where I do commerce, and just love people. I'm telling you, we live in a society, and if Paul thought he lived in a perverse, corrupted society in his day, how much more do we live in that kind of a society in the 21st century? And God, God wants to use you you to shine like the stars. And the 
as I was reading that passage of scripture, I, 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 I recalled another illustration. You know, the moon does not have a source of light. You know that, don't you? You say, but well, I look up in the sky and it's clear in the night. I, I, I see the moon. Yes, you do. But you wouldn't see the moon if it wasn't for the sun because the moon reflects the sun's light. Did you know that you and I who are Christians, Jesus followers, not only should we shine like the stars in the sky, but we should be reflectors of the sun. No, not the S-U-N sun, the S-O-N sun, Jesus Christ. Which means that we love like he loves. We invest in people's lives like he ask you this morning not to put you on the spot, don't answer publicly, but just answer to yourself. Who, whose life have you invested in? And I don't have them here because I haven't found them yet, but I will. I'd like to I'd like to know five people who don't know Jesus. You say, what do you mean you want to know them? Well, I just want to become acquainted with them. I want to have the opportunity to reflect (laughs) the light of the sun, S-O-N. I want to have the opportunity to, to be a shining star. I want to have the opportunity to hold out forth the word of life. For myself into their lives. And what does that mean? Well, it's, a, it's, it's not easy. And, and I say that be, because when you begin to do that, then you have to be there for them. And they're apt to ask you to help them with something that you might not be interested in. But, but, it's the way you invest in Kyle Kaner did it. So she did. Faith community called him the other day to see how he's doing, see what's happening in the church. He said, Pastor, if you got time, I want to tell you a story. He said, a friend of mine called me and said, uh, Kyle, would, would you visit, and I think this guy's name was John, Would you visit with a friend of mine? His name is John. He said, he's about to commit suicide. And I've tried to talk him out of it. And and he he said, but but would you? Kyle said, I'd be glad to. Kyle, I I wish you could know him. By the way, guys, he's a Church of God guy, okay? Graduate of Anderson. He might be. He said, I met this guy, John, and began to deal with him and and talk to him and and pour my life into his life when I realized I actually knew John because he was a service manager at the Ford dealership, and I would see him when I would take my Ford down to Hickory to get it serviced. He said, I began to talk to him, and this is what he told me. He said, you know, Pastor Kyle, he said, everything in my life is going haywire. He said, I, he said I, nobody cares about me. Nobody cares what I do. He said, I've just concluded that the best thing I could do would be to leave this world by my own hand. And Kyle said, told him, 
are you aware that God loves you? Are you aware that God is interested in your life? Are you aware that all these things that you think are hindrances and are not, are you aware that God is aware of those things? And all you have to do is put your faith and confidence in God. One of the things that this young man wanted to do was build a house. And he said, I already own the lot, but he said, my neighbor, he doesn't want me to build a house there. He said, I don't know what he said. He said, it's just another thing, Kyle. And Kyle said, let's trust God. Will you trust God? God said, I'll give it one more shot. And Kyle said, if you'll give it one more shot, God is going to intervene in your life. Kyle said, the first thing that happened to Jim was this. He went out to the lot where he wanted to build his house, and the neighbor came out, and when he saw him coming, he started to run to his car and leave because he didn't want to be confronted by that neighbor. But the neighbor got to him before he could get away. He told Kyle, he said, this guy is so anti, he said, I don't even know his name. He won't even tell me what his name is. Oh, and by the way, when he walked away from Kyle, he said, if that's true, I want God to prove himself to me. And he went to the lot to step off or whatever he was going to do that day. His neighbor comes out. He said, I started to run and get away from him, but he got to me before I could get away. And he said, hey, John, my name is. I'm your neighbor. And John said, yeah, I, I know that. He said, I understand you want to build a house here. Yeah, I'd like to. He said, you know what? He said, I used to be a contractor. <laughs> if you want to build a house here and you're going to do it by yourself, would you let, quote, would you let me help you do that? And John called Kyle and said, Kyle, you're right. God does love me. God is interested in me. And Kyle said, Pastor Tim, I want you to know that young man gave his heart and life to Christ, and we're going to baptize him to church. Amen. What did Kyle do? He just became a reflector of the Son of God. He, be, he, he shines like the stars in the darkest night in Texas, and he holds out the word of life to people who are hurting. You know people like that. I know you do. I know people like that in Winterhaven. My, my responsibility is, first of all, to, be, to shine like the stars in the sky, to hold out the word of life, and to love them like Jesus loves them. Amen. Well, it's a great sermon. I'm telling you, it is. I prayed over it. And we'll continue to pray over it. We, we, we don't let great sermons get away. Okay. Next week, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little outline that you can fill in because I want you to write these eight things down. Eight ways that the First Church of God can shine in 2024. Let's pray together. Jesus, we, we do love you today. We thank you for your love and your goodness. Oh, God, thank you. Because when I think about how important it is to shine like a star, how important it is to reflect the life of Jesus, I am immediately reminded of those in another day who shone like stars in the sky in my life and reflected the life of Jesus and held out to me a boy in Sunday school 
teenager in a youth group, a camper at a youth camp, a pastor who held forth the word of life. I'm in the kingdom today because they were faithful. In the 21st century, in 2024, God, where you want to do more in our personal lives, where you want to do more in this church than you've ever done before. Oh God, help us to be willing vessels to be used of you in these days. For it's in the name of Jesus that we ask.